Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at moment connections, or concentrated forces on flanges and webs. So flanges and webs with concentrated forces, right? That's the official title uh, for AISC Chapter J10. But typically, right, that's what we use when we're going to be checking uh, moment connections. Um, there's a couple other cases there where we use this section um, for bearing type connections, and we'll, we'll talk about that as well as we get into it. Uh, but within the chapter, right, the failure modes that we check, uh, the first one is flange local bending, right? So that's going to be tension on the flange. So this would be, you know, the tensile component of that moment connection pulling on the, on the column flange. Then we have web local yielding, right? So this can be compression or tension uh, caused by, you know, the top or bottom flange of the beam. We have web local crippling, right? Which is going to be a compressive force uh, into the column. We have web side sway buckling, right? So this is going to be actually from that bearing type connection. So this would not occur in a moment connection, but more, uh, you know, a plate or something like that bolted to a, a, a flange and, and pushing compression on it. So we would get this type of failure mode. And then we have web compression buckling where we have, you know, equal or maybe not necessarily equal, but we have opposing compression forces, uh, which causes uh, buckling in the web of that column, right? So we would get this typically, um, you know, if we have a, a moment connection under dead loading. Um, and so we have both of the uh, bottom flanges of the beam pushing on the column uh, would, would create that compression buckling in the web. And then the last one is web panel zone shear. Um, we actually have a separate design module in CalcBook for this. Um, there's a lot of different parameters and inputs that go into that. So we separated it out uh, to be its own own check. Um, and we'll, we're will we not going to look at that in, in today's video, but we'll do a separate video uh, focusing on the web panel zone shear. All right, so let's take a look at the problem statement. Um, it's going to be a little bit uh, different today. We're going to look at two different scenarios. Uh, the first is going to be looking at the demand capacity ratio for the end beam column joint for lateral load. So we've got a, a two-story, two-bay uh, frame there, a moment frame. And we're going to be looking at that left joint on the first story. right? So if you kind of have that little diagram there, we've got our column, and then we've got our tensile and compressive forces uh, from the beam. And we've got uh, our moments there that we pulled from our analysis model. So we have a moment in the beam of 173 kip foot, and then the moment in the column of 167 kip foot. And then we are also going to go back and take a look at the, uh, a dead load case of the middle beam column joint um, under that dead loading. So we get that sort of opposite uh, loading from each side onto the column so we can check that web compression buckling. So our columns are going to be W14 by 90. And then our beams are W18 by 143. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now. So let's go ahead and click into our steel design. Uh, we can choose 16th or 15th. The, the design parameters in the spec uh, are the same between the, the two additions for this particular calculation. So we'll go ahead and click on the 16th. We'll click into our connection design. And then we've got our flanges with concentrated forces here. And then uh, I talked about our panel zone shear calculation. Um, we'll do another video on that uh, at another, another point in time. So go ahead and click on Confirm. All right, and so along our left side here, we can start to select um, some of our different options we have and then enter in all of our geometric parameters that we need to for uh, this calculation. So the first one is gonna be the load direction, right? So we're either gonna be looking at tension or compression. Um, in this case, we're gonna go ahead and start with compression. The connection type, right, uh, we talked about either using it as a moment connection or a bearing connection. Uh, for this particular calculation, we're gonna leave it as moment. Uh, for the compression flange bracing, this actually doesn't apply unless you are using uh, the bearing type. So we'll just leave that as is. And then the equal force on opposing or on the opposite flange, right? We talked about this. This will come into play when we look at the middle uh, column or the middle joint where we have the loading on either side of the column. But for this calculation, we're just going to leave it as one flange only. Uh, the distance from beam end to the concentrated force X, uh, this has to do with where this um, uh, force is occurring in relation to the length of the of this supporting member. So it basically wants to know how close to the edge uh, are you and whether or not certain forces can develop in the web and that sort of thing. So we're just going to put um, 12 feet. That's uh, you know approximately the mid-height or the, the height of the story. So we'll just put 144 inches. And then the length of bearing, uh, if we click on this, right, that's going to be basically the, for us, because we're looking at a moment connection, it's going to be the thickness of the flange, uh, which is acting, you know, the force acting on the, the column flange. So the thickness of the beam flange. And so for us, that's going to be 0 0.71 inches for our W14 member. 
And then we go into the supporting members. So for us, this is going to be that column, the W14 by 90. Um, and we are going to go ahead and enter in a few parameters here. We are going to look at, let's see, the depth is a total of 14 inches. Um, there is a shape factor in here that pops up, this QF, um, and it's just going to leave it as a 1.0 uh, for wide flange sections. You can go into this table here uh, and, and look at different options there for uh, HSSs and other, other, other options there. Uh, the clear distance between flanges is going to be 10 inches. Our K length is 2. Uh, our width of flange is 14.5 inches. So we already have this up here. The web is 0 0.44. Our laterally unbraced length. Uh, we're just going to use the height of the uh, the first story. Um, you can look into this more about uh, what the bracing is and the configurations, but uh, for our case, it's going to be 144 inches. And then uh, everything else, I believe, is going to stay as is. And then we should go ahead and enter in our demands. Uh, we are not going to use any load combinations because we're pulling this out of our analysis model. So these are going to be ultimate loads. Um, so we need to identify what the moment demand is in the member for part of the calculations. And so we have that our moment in the column is 167 kip feet. And then our concentrated load, um, right, we need to figure this out. We need to do a little bit of math here. We're going to take our moment in the beam, which is 173 kip foot, and then we're going to divide it by the depth of our W18 member, which is 19.5 inches. And so that's going to give us a, a tension and compression load of 106.5. All right, so we can go ahead and start looking into our different calculations here, right? We have uh, web local yielding, we have web local crippling, side sway buckling, and compression buckling. Um, these last two we can just kind of knock out here. Uh, since it's a moment connection, we don't have any side sway, and because we only have force on one side of the column, we do not get compression buckling. So these two will not come into play. And because we have compression selected, we do not have um, any uh, uh, flange local bending. So let's take a look at our web, web local yielding. So right, our X distance, right, it's just determining if it's outside that D zone. Um, and because it is, it determines the nominal capacity based on this distribution into the web there and this total length here and, and checking that for the yielding. And that gives us a capacity of 235 kips. Then we look at our web local crippling. So again, this type of failure mode. And again, checking that distance and where it is in relation to the depth of the beam. And it runs through this calculation and determines that's 190 kips. So between those two, right, it is controlled by web local crippling. But because we are going to have basically equal and opposite forces on uh, the top and bottom flanges, we can go and check the tension as well. And you can see actually that does control. So our flange local bending does control uh, for this particular case at 141 kips. So that's the design for the joint on the end with a one-sided beam connection. So let's go ahead and go back to our inputs um, and we'll update this for uh, the middle zone uh, where we have a beam on either side. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is just update our loading. So our moment demand in the, me in the member is going to be zero because we don't have any moment in the column. And then our concentrated load um, is going to be 145 kip feet divided by 19.5 inches. And we'll convert that to feet. Um, and that's going to be give us uh, approximately 90 kips. So now we can go to our capacity. Right, this is going to be compression now because we are going to be looking at the bottom flange uh, uh, providing compression on either side of the of the of the column. Um, now we're going to toggle this over to both flanges, right? And then everything else stays the same. So now we have our web compression buckling, which comes into play, um, and that does not actually change the uh, controlling uh, capacity. But it's good to see that the uh, this calculation populate uh, when we have forces on either side of the column. And again, uh, I think if we were to go to tension, it would probably change to flange local bending as the controlling, um, but it allows you to check uh, all the different uh, failure modes for this type of connection. So that is um, our moment connections uh, module for CalcBook. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.